Flooding in northern Oregon and southeastern Washington caused people to evacuate their homes. Now we're getting a look at the damage it left behind. A few lingering showers this evening, but some drier weather and some sunshine on the way for the rest of the weekend. And the flavored vaping ban is lifted in Washington. We spoke to a local business owner on how he managed to stay afloat. Good evening. Thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. Let's get right to the video here on the wall. We'll show you what's going on. Flooding continues to sweep across southeastern Washington and northeastern Oregon. We'll go ahead and show you that up close because the video is just incredible. The impact from yesterday's storm left places like Pendleton, Oregon on your top left of your screen severely damaged. Some cars stalled in waters and homes in neighborhoods were evacuated. Meanwhile, back here in Washington, Dayton and Walla Walla were under a flood warning until this morning. You can see in the Walla Walla area the rivers had some heavy currents. Meanwhile, in western Washington, the rain has dialed back a bit, but there's a greater chance of landslides. Meanwhile, shelters are also popping up in central Washington as flooding prompts evacuations there. There's an American Red Cross emergency shelter at the Walla Walla Fairgrounds. Responders can provide assistance with food, clothing, and anyone who needs help. And uh, those being evacuated are being told to only bring the essentials like prescriptions and emergency medication. Meanwhile, Crystal Mountain will be remain closed throughout the weekend because of the concern for landslides. So that area we're told near State Route 410, there's no estimate on when that will reopen. We'll of course continue to update you throughout the weekend. But here, back here in the inland northwest, it's been a lot drier, so let's get right to meteorologist Michelle Boss in the Weather Center. Michelle. Yeah, we just had a few sprinkles today in the Spokane area, otherwise much drier air moving into the region. The flooding concerns are, um, things are starting to get a little bit better as we see an end to the precipitation and some cooler temperatures kind of slowing down that snow melt in some of the mountains. Taking a look at the latest flood advisories and warnings, we still have a small stream advisory for Lewis County. That's around Lawyers Creek near Kamii, and that's actually been extended until tomorrow morning at 1130 and then still seeing some flooding along the Walla Walla River at two sheaf flood levels uh, about uh, the river's running about two feet above flood stage right now, but that will continue to recede and that warning continues until late tomorrow and you can see dry weather has pretty much moved into the entire inland northwest. We've got mostly clear skies out there. It's going to lead to some chilly temperatures overnight and tomorrow morning. We're just above freezing right now in Spokane. It's dropped into the 20s in Deer Park, upper 30s right now in Moses Lake, still hanging on to the 40s in Pomeroy. Here's a look at the next 12 hours with clear skies. We'll see our temperatures dip down to the lower 20s. So if you're headed out early tomorrow morning, there'll be some sunshine, but it will be on the cold side. But we're going to have a streak of some dry weather with partly cloudy skies on Sunday, high of 38 dry also on Monday and Tuesday, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies and highs back up in the lower 40s. A lot of big headlines on this Saturday. Let's get you up to speed on the stories you need to know in 60 seconds. Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward outlined the changes she hopes to see in the city over the next four years. The four key issues in her speech on Friday included homelessness, housing, economic development, and public safety. Woodward said the city needs to do more than just provide shelters to address homelessness. Instead, she hopes the city will look for long-term solutions. Washington State University is taking precautions because of the coronavirus. They've suspended all study abroad programs in China for the time being. The university made the move after concerns from the CDC and World Health Organization. The school isn't sure when the programs to China will resume. Investigators say the helicopter that crashed with Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others on board did not have engine failure. It could take up to a year to determine what caused the crash. A public memorial service is planned for February 24th at Staples Center in Los Angeles. Vape shops all around Washington are rejoicing this weekend after a ban on flavored vape products was lifted after four months. Creme 2's Brandon Jones explains how one shop downtown managed to stay open during the ban. And what it really did is affected our business uh, immediately. We didn't think it was going to have such a big effect. That's John Dawson. He's the owner of Kung Fu Vape in the U District downtown, and he says the temporary ban on flavored vape brought his shop some problems. The business took a hit. Foot traffic started slowing down. As soon as people found out they couldn't buy those products, they were only stuck with two options. He says that led people to either buying their go-to products online or driving across the state line into Idaho to pick up different vapes. 
A lot of his customers are from out of town, so they walk into his shop unfamiliar with the state laws and he had to let them know there weren't any of the flavors in stock. But now, February 8th, we're, we're back in business. We're fully stocked, we have all the flavor stuff back on the shelf. Back in October, the ban was put into place with the idea of preventing underage kids from vaping. In December, Governor Inslee said he was in favor of a permanent ban. That temporary ban lasted 120 days, and since then, the legal purchase age for any tobacco or vape product was raised to 21 years old in the state. For shop owners like John, he knows the rules and regulations are something that's always going to change, but he's trying to stay ready for anything. Because we don't want any issues. We're trying to run a business and make money, feed our families. From Spokane, Brandon Jones, Crim 2 News. New tonight, Spokane police have caught the thief who was spotted on camera stealing thousands of dollars of items from a downtown tattoo shop. This is according to a Facebook post posted by Anchored Art Tattoo and Gallery, the shop that was hit. They wrote that the items were discovered in an apartment, but not all of the equipment and items stolen will be returned. The tattoo shop downtown was offering a $1,000 reward for anyone who could identify the person. Their suite in the Paulson Center was hit early Friday morning, along with several other businesses. Looking ahead, a King County judge who already temporarily blocked Washington's car tab measure says he hopes to rule next week on whether it's constitutional. Judge Marshall Ferguson heard arguments on Initiative 976 on Friday. Voters approved that measure in November. It caps car tab fees at $30. The state's budget office estimates that the car tab measure would eliminate more than $4 billion in tax revenue by 2025. Well, we're also tracking a new software bug found on the 737 MAX. Boeing discovered the problem during flight testing and notified the FAA last month about it. The problem was that an indicator light designed to warn of a malfunction was turning on when it wasn't supposed to. Boeing says this latest flaw shouldn't delay the plane's return to service, which the company hopes will be this summer. Natural Grocers is opening a new location on Spokane South Hill. It's set to open February 19th. It's at the corner of Southeast Boulevard and 29th Avenue. And in case you don't know where that is, that's the old Hastings building. The company says it will offer natural and organic products. On to sports now. Gonzaga men's basketball thumped to rival St. Mary's 90-60 to tonight. Karthik Venkatraman joins us now. Karthik, this game was essentially over in the first half. Yeah, they took care of business pretty quickly. They Killian did. Tilly came back into this game for Gonzaga. Him. Yeah, he was out the past couple games with that left ankle sprain, so it was good to see him back. And him and the rest of the team were just cooking tonight. They it was fire. just <laughs> easy money for them. The Zags were lay up shortly thereafter. You're going to get a kick out from Admon Gilder. Corey Kispert in the corner. You know that's true. Three points right there. First half. And we're up by 25 at the break. And as we mentioned, they won by 30 points. I mentioned, and you saw Killian Tilly was back tonight. As you can see, the ankle looks pretty fine. As you can see on that dunk right there. It didn't look like he missed a step in this one after missing the past two games. 19 points on 70% shooting tonight. So, yeah, the Zags rolled. They dropped 30-point win over St. Mary's. A lot of people thought this game was going to be close, but... Hey, Gonzaga looked really gonna, sharp, yeah. and they were able to they, did they were able to stop the St. Mary's early too. So good win. Now next Saturday is their next game. So They're gonna go next? play Pepperdine, and that's gonna be a tough matchup for them on the road because if you remember, January fourth, Pepperdine came into the kennel and, and gave biter. Gonzaga <laughs> quite a bit of run for their money. No one thought that that game was gonna be close, and it came down to Killian Tilly getting that game-winning block to really seal the deal. So we'll see what these two teams are able to do when they meet back up here next weekend. All right, Karthik, thanks so much.